Today, I'm going to talk about the three ways that a religious narcissist keeps you hooked. Hi, I'm Nanette. Welcome back to Narcissism Exposed. So the first way that the narcissist keeps you hooked is by way of this one verse, and I'm going to read it to you. And it's in Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 to 22. And it says, Then Peter came to Jesus and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. So what does that basically mean? That means it's unlimited how many times you forgive your brother. Now this is a very popular verse that the religious narcissist loves to use because when you were in your experience or maybe you're still with that narcissist, how many times have you had to forgive that person, him or her, or listen to their fake apology once again? And so many times the narcissist with their continual, right, repetitive abuse towards you will say, well, you know, God's word, the Bible says that you should be forgiving me at unlimited many times. That's right. That's what the Bible says. And you being the empath, the good person, the Christian, you're like, well, yeah, the Bible does tell me I have to forgive you. So I guess I'm going to have to forgive you for the thousandth time, for the two thousandth time. You, you get where I'm going with this. However, there is a caveat to this. The Bible never tells you to stick around for the abuse. In fact, God's word tells us the opposite of that. So let's take a look at another verse that talks about forgiveness. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 4 verse 32 and it says, And be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ Jesus has forgiven you. Well, that is another fantastic verse about forgiveness. But I want you to think back to that verse and the other verse that I shared with you. Did you hear anywhere in either of those verses that God's word says, and stick around for the abuse, be a doormat, take whatever abuse the narcissist gives you and keep forgiving. Yes, forgive, but you can forgive from afar. Why? Because God wants you protected. God doesn't want you to be a doormat or a punching bag. Want proof? We're going to go to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 2 to 5. And in these verses, God lists those characteristics, those traits, those syndromes of those evil, toxic narcissists and other toxic people. And then in the last three words of the fifth verse, he gives us a three word command and I'm going to read that to you. And it says, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unruly, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despises of those who are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Avoid such people. There is that three-word command from God Almighty. Avoid such people because God wants you safe, as I said, and protected. And he wants you to walk in the peace that Jesus Christ came to give us. The second way that the religious narcissist keeps you hooked to him or her is that they'll tell you if you're married to them, oh, no, no, God's word, the Bible says no divorce. You can't divorce me. <laughs> no, God's word says no divorce right? And so it does. I'm going to read to you in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verses 10 and 11 and it says, now to those having married, I give you this charge, not I, but the Lord. A wife is not to be separated from her husband, right? But if she depart, let her remain unmarried. 
or be reconciled to her husband, and a husband is not to divorce his wife. First of all, before you even got married to that narcissist, of course, at the time you didn't know he or she was a narcissist, how many red flags did you notice? I'm going to guess a few. And for many of us, we either didn't know what to do with that red flag, or maybe we thought, hey, you know, maybe those red flags will all go away under marital bliss. But what I want you to understand that with a marriage with a narcissist who is demonically influenced and is out to destroy you, that is not a holy covenant and it is not ordained by God Almighty. That's right. So when we ignore those red flags and we ignore or don't hear God's still small voice telling us, no, don't do it. This is not right. We suffer the consequences, but we're not going to let these detestable narcissists convince us that we should stay married to them because why? It is an unholy covenant. It was not ordained of God and we will not be sleeping with the enemy tonight. Look, it says in Ephesians chapter 5 verses 11 and 12 and have no fellowship. And I want you to think of that word no as zero. So have zero fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. And that narcissist is full of unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them for it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. And I'm telling you, you all know this. If you think that the dirty, detestable, evil things that you have visually seen the narcissist do to you was bad, you don't even want to know the deep, dark, dirty, shameful things that that narcissist is doing behind your back in the back end. Want more proof? We're going to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14, and it says, Do not be unequally yoked or partnered, or teamed, or married to unbelievers. And that narcissist, especially that religious narcissist, is an unbeliever. And I don't care how many times he or she professes to be amazing Christians and everyone loves them. They're even standing in the pulpits. That word profess, they're professing it to you. Anyone can say, I'm a great Christian. What you look at is their actions and their intentions and their consistency on how they treat you. And this verse goes on to say, for what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? That narcissist is lawless. We read it in 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 2 through 5, how they could care less about values, your morals, God's standards. They are lawless. And what communion or fellowship has light with darkness? None. So we who are born again of Holy Spirit, and if you're not yet born again of Holy Spirit, or you're not sure if you are, go to Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, and it says, For if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And that light in you, the, nar the darkness in the narcissist can't stand the light. It irritates them. That's why your light with the demonically driven narcissist cannot coexist. That's why there's just nothing but friction and irritation because your light is dispelling that darkness in the narcissist. But the narcissist is not going to resist that easily. No, he's going to come or she's going to come at you with both barrels blazing. And you know what that detestable narcissist, what that dark heart does to you in a marriage. If you even so much as say, well, you know, you talk about divorce or separating, they start to either guilt you or shame you or pressure you. You know what I'm talking about. The third way a religious narcissist keeps you hooked to them is by saying, well, you know, let's say they're a parent, right? Either a mother or a father or both. 
and they'll say, well, you know, the Bible says you need to honor me. Now I'm going to read to you a section of scripture and we're going to read what that says. And it's in Ephesians chapter six, verse one. And it says children. Now this is referring to children under the age being under the care of their parents. This is not referring to grown 30, 40 year old, 50 year old, six, you go on up, adult children, where a parent will shake their little crooked finger at you, the narcissist, and say, well, the Bible says to honor me. I want you to pay attention to what I'm gonna bring out. So it says, children, obey your parents. Now here are three very important words that always get left out, in the Lord. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. Those narcissists, that narc mom, narc dad, they are not in the Lord. So even as an adult, if they try using that verse on you, you, you can re return the, the verbiage with, mother, father, you are not in the Lord. Please do not use that verse inappropriately. Then that verse goes on to say, honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. So again, honoring of the father and mother, it's going back to that first word in that verse, which is children, children who are under that, the auspices of, because of their age and being raised by parents, because, you know, I, I guess in this day and time, it's what, 18, some places it's 20 or 21 but you get where I'm going with this. So when you're a grown adult, this, is not, you, this does not apply to you in that sense because you are now a grown up. And number two, it's in the Lord, parents in the Lord. Can you imagine having a narcissist parent hammer you over the head figuratively with this verse saying, yes, the Bible says to honor me and doesn't matter. Here's what my mother used to say. So my narcissist mother used to say, I can do anything I want to you, but you have to honor and respect me no matter what I do to you. And in my head, I'm thinking, how is that fair? But of course you couldn't verbalize that as a child because you know, then comes the punishment. But you get where I'm going with that. So many, so many narcissists know scripture at least to this degree, where they know how to use it against you to guilt you, again, shame you, and pressure you. So yeah, if you have a narcissist mother or father doing that to you, feel free to detach, remove yourself, avoid them, and go no contact. And some of the grown children of these narcissist parents go, but you know, Nanette, I, I'm so afraid of them. I'm so afraid of my narc mom or my narc dad because there's so much rage in them and they frighten me and they scare me. Well, here's what God's word says in 2 Timothy chapter 1, 7. It says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Some other of my viewers have said, but Nanette, I fear for their health and you know, they're getting older and I'm in my sixties and I don't know what to do because my parents are in their eighties and they're feeble and they're demanding that I help them. And how many of you are stuck in that situation, that abusive situation? And I'm not talking about taking care of your loving mother and father. I'm talking about these narcissist parents that demand you to take care of them. And whilst you're doing it, they are continuing to abuse you. Look, God's word says, avoid such people, period. If they need the kind of help that they're talking about, they're state aid. There's all kinds of aid out there. You don't need to be guilted into doing that or shamed or pressured into doing that. You know, there's a fantastic verse in God's word. And it's in Matthew chapter 12, verses 46 through 50. And it says, while Jesus was still speaking to crowds, he was teaching the Bible. He was speaking to the multitude. His mother and brother stood outside around the outskirts wanting to speak to him. Well, there's nothing unusual about that. However, 
Jesus Christ was ministering God's word. So he was performing, carrying out his mission. And someone told Jesus Christ and said, look, your mothers and your brothers, they're standing outside. They want to speak to you. But Jesus replied, who is my mother and who are my brothers? Then he pointed to his disciples and said, look, these are my mother. These are my brothers. Who? Those who were wanting to hear Jesus Christ speak about God and the kingdom of God. That's who he pointed to. He was in no way at that time, I just want to get this clear, rejecting his mother or brothers. He was just saying that, well, you know what? These are my mother and my brothers also. And right now I am ministering God's word to them. How fantastic is that? Then the last part of this verse, for whoever does the will of my father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. You know, I can't tell you, like I've been in God's word and in various parts of uh, different ministries in the United States. And I have had the most lovely older women, sister in Christ, be more of a mother to me or a mother figure than my own mother, including sisters in Christ, be more of a sister to me than my own twin and older sister are to me. So you have to understand, you know, you've heard the expression, blood is thicker than water, but blood is not thicker than Holy Spirit. That's right. So the, the family of God that we are in, which is united and connected by Holy Spirit, is greater than that blood family. And you know, look, many of us come from dysfunctional homes as children. And so the family that we thought was the norm or the normal for us, we are now understanding through Holy Scripture just how dysfunctional that was according to God's word. And God setting the, it straight for us what we must do to stay safe and protected. And then I have some of my viewers saying, well, you know, Nanette, society and extended family, you know, they think something's wrong with you if you're not with your family or taking care of your mother and father. Look, most of the society and extended family have no idea or understanding about narcissistic abuse. And also, who does the narcissist attack? They will attack the victim in their inner, inner circle. They will look like the perfect parent to the other family members and to society. So most people are oblivious to this type of narcissistic abuse. And you know, you get well-meaning family members, well, well, you know, everybody's doing their best. No, they are not. Not when it comes to a narcissist. They are doing their worst. And you know what? You have to do what's right for you. You have to do what's best for you. And God wants what's best for you by telling you to avoid these people. And I want you to want that for yourself. And then I had another viewer say, well, Nanette, isn't it easier just to pretend everything's okay with my narcissist mother and my narcissist father, you know, just kind of cope with it or wait till the storm blows over. No, it's not okay to pretend because you know what you're going to get? You're going to get. Uh, your mental health affected, your physical health affected, your emotional health affected. It's going to affect you and you raising your children and you and your job. You get what I'm saying. No, it's not okay to pretend because there's a great verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33, and it says, bad company or bad associations such as that with a narcissist corrupts or affects your good morals no matter how much you may try no matter how much you may say look i'm not going to let them affect me i'm just going to pretend everything's okay it will affect you god's word tells us that it's going to affect us and there are places in proverbs which tells tells us that laughter does great like a medicine but evil and wickedness can dry your bones so yes that wickedness of the narcissist will affect you. No pretending, okay? Look, one of the sneakiest types of narcissists are the religious narcissists 
because they abuse God's word in addition to abusing you. That's right. They misuse it and they use it for their own personal gain. Look, even the devil can quote scripture. When Jesus Christ was in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, and the devil comes along towards the end of those 40 days and tempts Jesus Christ, he quoted scripture. So the devil knows scripture, but he doesn't use it correctly. He will misuse it to tempt, to destroy, and to keep you hooked to that narcissist. So leave your comments down below. Let me know your thoughts. If you have any prayers, please leave your prayer requests down below. Know that I love you and pray for you each and every day. And if you found this helpful, do hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed, do hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I put out a video. And until next time, walk in peace and be blessed in your hearts.